All right, we're back for part two. So, okay, keep keep on with that uh, that whole vibe with the uh, caffeine because I'm a huge caffeine drinker, and I just I'm drinking my coffee right now. And when I was making it, bro, I was when I was making, it, I was like, I don't know why, but I think Jorge is gonna tell me something about this <laughs> coffee. <laughs> but it's good, bro. Like you, you have to live and learn, right? So, I hadn't done my research on that, so it's good that you, that's why I brought you on today, man. Because like you can make minor changes that make huge impact in your life. And right now, like I'm learning that this drinking coffee late at night, obviously is going to be not only um, a stimulant that's going to be in my bo body for the next eight to 10 hours or six to eight hours. Not only that, but it's, it's rising my cortisol levels, which cortisol equals stress, right? And then stress equals uh, fat around your belly, you know, the belly mm -hmm. fat. And then it also, it's an anabolic, you said, so it destroys muscle. Catabolic. Catabolic, sorry. Cat anabolic is the other way around, right? Uh -huh, exactly. And it builds. It builds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a catabolic and then and it breaks down muscle. So dude, like, no wonder I can't get any muscle, man. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, bro. It's it's small things that influence and <laughs> look at you, bro. Fuck out of here talking about can't get no muscle. I gotta work out. How, I gotta work out. How old are you, bro? 45. Damn, you look you look phenomenal, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Was I've been working on myself, bro, for the last probably like eight years, 2016. Like, yeah. Is that eight years? I'm losing my math right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not good at math, bro. I can talk about this all day, but math, though, not, not no, math. No, see, it, it, but it, I mean, my genetics too, my parents look really, really good for their age, but taking care of yourself is one thing. Like, I noticed that when I started drinking more alcohol, my my age started showing more. And for the longest time, like, I wouldn't even drink. I wouldn't even do stuff like that. When I started drinking when I was 21, muscle menos, right? But I wouldn't drink as as much as I, I did at one point, like, especially during COVID. I was drinking like more than usual. Like, dude, I noticed that you age faster, you your cells oxidize faster, cortisol levels go up the roof. You know, inc incident, everything, dude. Like, we're killing our bodies because we don't know what we're doing. So, yeah, bro. Like, so all of these little details you started implementing at a very young age so it's helping you that's why you look good like you're you're fit you know you're in a fit in a good way right you're not like you know like you're showing off like huge muscles and everything like you you're talking about how health doesn't necessarily have to look like that it's more like hey dude like on a 360 i'm i'm trying to keep my health in in all areas good you know not just looking good phys physique wise but internally body organs brain you know mental health all of that stuff and that's not to say that by being healthy or having like a health conscious approach, you can't look good. There's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of people that, that do both. Um, I know for my part, my priority is way more like my internal well being mm -hmm. than my external, but that doesn't mean that there's not periods where like I focus a little bit more on building some muscle, like on aesthetics without ignoring or neglecting like the internal works or the health, but that's just me. Um, going back to your point like with the coffee it's not to be a debbie downer like oh you shouldn't do this yeah I feel like my job is like hey whether you want to do this or not these are the consequences like there's no way around it mm -hmm. i just want the consequences to catch you by surprise so like Correct. this is what's going to happen if for whatever reason you need one day a little boost or you need whatever it is here are strategies that we can do to mitigate the negative effects and then the next day we're just back on board um because i do feel like people have the perspective like if they want to carry with this lifestyle they have to be super dramatic and extreme and it's not the case like extreme i don't think is the answer for anything it's always finding a balance balance but, but that's also not to say that we can neglect or ignore things um so yeah i've i've experimented i've done things that have not benefited me i've done things like it's all about finding what works for you but there are principles in nature and evolution that apply for everyone that we can't escape. Um, so it's just like trying to be as congruent with nature, um, even though it's a challenge nowadays. So like for for the the dad and the mom that are out there and they're hustling, they're working hard and, you know, how can they start by making not a drastic change? Because obviously that's, that's like a slap in the face sometimes for people like mm -hmm. up. I can't change everything, but what will you do like to start where like uh where where can somebody start who's super busy, has kids, has you know, like me, I'm a I'm a dad who's always coach not coaching, but I used to coach. 
my daughter softball, uh, going going on softball tournaments, and like it's just sometimes it's crazy hectic, you know. So, what do you recommend as far as like maybe is it a mindset thing, or is it a gradual thing? It's Or, definitely a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. What I would, the most influential thing for our health is our light environment. Um, without going too specific, for hormonal uh, functioning, for cellular functioning, nothing influences more than light. And there's not a single aspect of our health that is not influenced by light. So this could be something super small and we all got to start somewhere. So if you're a busy entrepreneur, if you're a busy parent, If you have a phone call, try to take it outside. Like, go outside, get some sunlight. Um, I don't know. If you are going to have lunch, I know in Laredo during the summer, middle of summer, <laughs> it's it's hella hard. It's fucking hot. It's hard. Uh, it's hard at night, too, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. It definitely is. Um, no, no, no. But no, just get get, getting as much natural sunlight as we can when we can. And then at night, trying to minimize um artificial light as much as we can so these blue light blocking glasses i feel like are a must in today's modern society um for example i switched out um and i had it ready for today mm -hmm. these are led light bulbs so switching from like an led light bulb which is high in, in blue light to an incandescent light bulb which has like more infrared light um small things like that so getting as much sunlight as we can during the day whether it's going out for like a one minute walk on the phone call going outside for lunch, uh, whatever it is. If you're driving out of town, rolling the window windows down um, to let that sun in so the glass isn't blocking it. And I, saw, I know it sounds so weird, like, oh, what is that going to do? But I promise you, hormonally, um, cellular, like nothing influences more than light does. Do, do you uh, know about Andrew Huberman? Is that, I think that's Dr. Yes, Andrew, Andrew Huberman, yes. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of the 45-15 rule? where he's yeah. like i don't know if you heard about it so it, it he says like after being on the computer for 45 minutes inside especially if you're inside go outside and just for, stare on to the horizon for five to 15 minutes just stare at the horizon because that's going to rewire your brain and put you back into make your eyes less stressed and it's a little bit off topic but but at the same time it's, it's kind of like talking about light because you're just talking like if you're on a phone call just go outside and get the phone call at the same time you're you're being away from your computer getting away from your phone from actually seeing it like this you're actually on the phone call and then you're you're out there getting some sun and letting your eyes just like relax and then rewiring your brain from all the all the stuff that we ingest on a, on a you know metaphysical level whereas we're learning stuff or reading stuff or we're doing stuff on our on our computers or business or whatever it might be So just those techniques, that thing alone, dude, like I love that idea. Like, hey, just go take the call outside, man, and get some vitamin D, you know, at the same time. So I'm going to share something that has worked tremendously with my mm -hmm. clients. So within natural sunlight with the sun, we have the rainbow of colors within the sun. Like we have a full yes. spectrum of color. The gammas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that, that for simplicity can be uh, like broken down into three categories. Mm-hmm. So the first category is red and infrared light and each uh, spectrum or electromagnetic field of color. That's more technical, but each yeah, color that's all, um, is like a nutrient with food. Like we have different nutrients. Oh, okay. Okay. Like each, the rainbow each, of nutrients. Yeah, exactly. Each color has its own benefit. So for example, when the sun starts breaking the horizon at sunrise, yeah. we get red and infrared light. Now red and infrared light, it sets our circadian rhythm mm -hmm. it energizes our mitochondria so that's another topic yes bro I'm i a, love the mitochondria I'm a mitochondria freak i <laughs> Crab <recently> cycle <laughs> started learning about that yeah um but the mitochondria is like the foundation of health if we talk about cellular health it oh. all comes down to the mitochondria so red and infrared light mm -hmm. uh, and this is like a very complex topic so Maybe we can have another conversation when we go deeper. No, no, into no, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. But the red and infrared light energizes the mitochondria. It, el it also helps us reduce melatonin within the skin. Th this is all red and infrared. Um, it helps regenerate uh, our skin. It sets our circadian rhythm. And it also prepares our body for the stress 
of ultraviolet light, which is another one of the categories of color. So at sunrise, we get that red and infrared light. So if you can, whoever can uh, get sunrise from when it breaks the horizon to 10 degrees, which is about like 45 minutes, there's just an app called the circadian app that lets you know when sunrise is happening. So from sunrise to 45 minutes, if you can expose yourself to that light, if you're driving to work, roll the windows down. If you're at home, open your doors, open the windows. If you can go outside, go outside. But just getting at least a minute of that red and infrared light is gonna be a huge, huge game changer. So then once the sun, I'm sorry, do you want to pause there or should I? Okay. I love it. <laughs> so, so once the sun rises above 10 degrees, we get that ultraviolet A. Now, ultraviolet A is going to help us with hormone reduction. And it's also going to help us get us that nice, sexy tan, which we're producing more melanin in the body. So from 10 degrees to... 30 degrees, we have um, UVA. So we have those, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have UVA. Once we get to 30 degrees, we get UVB, which, which we pro, uh, produce vitamin D with, and it's huge for our immune system. So we have those three pockets of, of windows of time where if we can get at least one minute of each, your, your health is gonna- One, one minute of each? At least one to two minutes. If we can get more, obviously get more. But if you can start by one to two minutes and just doing that consistently, I promise within given time, like maybe a week, two weeks, you will feel the difference. Oh, game changer, game changer. I love, actually, I love working out in the morning. So I actually didn't know too much about the infrared and the red, right? So you know what? One habit of mine is that when I wake up in the morning, because my door, my back door is right here. It faces east. So as soon as I open the door in the mornings, I see the sunrise. I love Let's seeing it go. for a few. You know, it's weird that I, I love to see it for a few seconds. I just kind of like let it sink, man. Like, oh, man, that's a badass sunrise. And then I like the colors. The, the colors that in the morning is like a purple, like a red, orange. And then boom, it comes out like blasting, right? But um, those first few minute, minutes, it's, it's amazing. So it's even... Badass that I just do that on a condition, like on a subconscious level, like I'm just like, because I want to see the sunrise. But now the benefits, bro, and I love grounding in the morning. So like doing that and then getting the infrared and the red and getting the UVA and the UVB, like, wow, man, that's amazing. <laughs> what what do you feel in your body like that you notice the change with? Like, is it the joints? Is it the, just your, you just feel healthier? Like you don't feel like you're going to get tired as much or what? It's everything, bro. But honestly, mm -hmm. hormonally, like red and infrared and UVA light is so powerful that you start producing all these like um, like dopamine, adrenaline. And, and these are hormones that your body seeks out naturally. Mm -hmm. So um, when we get deeper into like this, the response and the hormonal response from infrared light and UVA, um, it literally becomes addictive. So that for me, and, and it's intuitive, bro. Like our bodies are wise. Um, and everyone loves like a good sunrise, a sunset. It's just beautiful, but not a lot of people know what goes on, uh, beyond that, beyond the curtains, but hormonally, there's so much happening that you start producing like all these positive hormones that your body seeks it. So if you're not getting it like through infrared or UV light, you're going to get it. You're most likely going to seek it through drugs through alcohol, through all these things that naturally produce these like very highly emotional filled uh, hormones. So with sun, I think that's the biggest, like when I see the sunrise, I don't know what your stance. Um, I consider myself like a spiritual, more into spirituality yeah. than religious, but I encourage someone to like look at the sunrise and not believe that there's like a divine creature, oh, whatever man, you want to call it. Like when 100%. you look at a sunrise, bro, and then you start understanding the science behind it and everything it produces inside your body. So I think that's the biggest difference to me. Looking at the sunrise is like a sh shot of energy, bro. Like I don't need no coffee. Ooh. I don't need no Red Bull. I don't need anything. I just need my sunrise and I'm good for the day. Bro, 
game changer. Hey, bro, I'm telling you, like, the, the Frequency Squad, my homies, they're going to love this, bro. They're going to love this episode because you're talking about, you're hitting points that are going to give us that motivation to keep on, like, because we love to talk about grounding, you know, getting our vitamin D in the sun, you know, working out. But these details make a, a drastic change. Like, oh, shit, we actually know why we actually, like, going outside in the morning and instead of having a shot of coffee we're having a shot of vitamin uh from the u the uvas the uvbs and the infrareds and the reds Whew, that's amazing bro it's, i love that bro i can see you're passionate about it and i can feel the energy like man i was like damn I keep on saying more stuff about that <laughs> <laughs> I, i can talk about this all day bro like for example that's mm -hmm. why i was so grateful to to hop on podcast because i know my family's tired of just me like talking about all these things mm -hmm. but like i i really this is my life's work this is my purpose i know i was put on this earth to like help people with these mm -hmm. stuff with these concepts and when i talk about it bro like right now it's 11 p.m i go to bed like at eight but i am full of energy bro like i could do this for like two three four five more hours um because it's, it's, you you you've done the work and you're passionate about it And you you understand your body how it works, so you feeding the body to able to perform on things that you want to do on a passionate level, and so you're already like I'm already set to give out all the energy that I have to ex uh, exert for whatever task I need to do, because you're preparing yourself for uh, throughout the days throughout the you know it's a routine for you already like you don't have to like eat tomorrow to like no like you it's a consecutive thing that you habitually learn to do. And prepare your body for excellence like and mind your you like and like you said your spiritual self because on a spiritual level bro it's like you're putting everything together for that spiritual self to be at a higher power you know what i mean if you do all the mechanical work for your body and your mind it, the spiritual is always like at a at a higher magnetism work working for you you're like you just feel like at ease and at peace and at love everywhere you go i'm pretty sure right because of the the balance of hormones that's exactly right bro and i loved how you phrased that And also, given the context of the the modern life that we live in, this is also like a, a very a very good way to combat all the other stress in life. Because and we've talked about it a little bit. There is chem chemicals in our food. Um, even when you try to eat healthy, most food is uh, sprayed with herbicides, glyphosate, which is extremely detrimental to our health. Mm -hmm. um, we're surrounded by very high and harmful frequencies like Wi-Fi, like 5G, like Bluetooth. Um, light in of itself is an electromagnetic uh, frequency. So artificial lighting is a very harmful frequency. And then we have like social media, which is also putting out some harmful stuff. Obviously there's there's positive stuff, but what I'm trying to say with this, if, if your light environment is optimal, you give your body a better, environment a better chance to fight up all these other things that are like causing uh harm on your body all these toxic loads or toxic exposures man and it's simple it's simple but we are bombarded by everything else throughout the day uh just walking into a mcdonald's already just you're smelling the oil already <laughs> and then they have free wi-fi in there and then you have they have all these free uh, sugary drinks and even the ones that don't have sugar like ching apples i'll get the diet coke but ching the contaminants are still bad bro i know that uh they're bad for your your memory bad for your brain all that all that bad stuff dude like ching yeah it's just it's hard for the typical person to kind of like sway away from the routines of they kind of like self-sabotages you know But mm, but if you start making some subtle changes, like Jorge is mentioning, hey, ¿sabes qué? Pues antes un ratito en la mañana, wey. just go outside, get some sun, you know, instead of having that coffee first thing in the morning, get some water, get some vitamin D, go outside, get some sun, get some breathing techniques. Are you into breath work as well? You know, yes. work. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a student when it comes to that, but part of what I want to like offer mm -hmm. is also breath work, also crucial, 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 crucial. Yeah, breath work for me has done amazing things, bro. From, uh, like learning how to meditate and then using breath work and understanding that shit. When I was doing that, when I was praying back in the days, when my, my grandma I was teaching the family how to pray, I was that's kind of like meditation. And then when I was playing soccer with my dad, he was teaching us indirectly how to breathe like 
consciously to be at a higher level of, of playing, you know, like, hey, you want to play in Excel, like, and really, really play good? If you don't have your breath right, you ain't going to play right because you're going to gas out. But if you know how to breathe right, you're going to play long, a lot longer uh, at a higher level and you're going to be uh, beating your opponent because on a one-on-one, -on -one, like, you're al al already beating your opponent just by your breath work. It's like, wow, I didn't even know that. And my dad would teach us all that stuff. And I was like, okay, dad, we're going to do the breath work here. It's boring, but we got we to gotta do it. It's part of Man, practice. That's so cool. It was that's part so of practice, crazy. bro. Oh, really? Yeah, it was that's part so of cool. it was, That was our first, like, 15 minutes. It's just uh, stretching and breath work. Stretching and breath work and, and warming up. And and always you would always remind us, breathe in, breathe out. Profundo. Saca el aire. Hold it. And then sprint. And then hold your oxygen. Like, what the hell? Like... But then when I would play football and, and basketball, I was like, I would never get tired. I was like, oh, yeah. shit, thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Don Salvador was ahead of his time, bro. Like, oh, yeah. he's, he's a great man. Um, what breath work do you practice? Well, actually, it's just um, I, there's little things that I've learned, kind of like um, it's more on a spiritual level, kind of sort of. Okay. And, and, uh, and also, like, you would breathe in, and it's kind of like a mantra. Mm -hmm. So you would breathe in, and it's like, and then you're like, God, you know, and just hold it, let it go all through your body, all the way to your toes, and then just bring it back up and then release it slowly. And then I would say love, you know, like, a, and then breathe in, like, and then all the way, same process, all the way to my toes and all the way back to my body and exhale. And then I would say peace. It's kind of like a, a mantric uh, word okay. for breath, but each breath is like a long inhale, a long hold, and then a long exhale. And I started doing that because because uh, you're just reading those books, man, on on breath work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then it was not one specific. I just kind of catered it to myself. You know, like, this is what works for me. I like doing this. And there were meditations, I mean, man, it just helped me a lot to, like, actually relax my body. And I was like, dude, just by doing this, you just change your affid. Like, you, you change your vibe, you know, just, like, automatically. And it, it would make a lot of the tougher things to do a lot easier. Because you're actually willpower stronger, you know, like. And you do I you practice? It. Do you practice one in particular, or is it more like a? The most simple one for me is box mm -hmm. breathing. Okay. So, for example, like five yeah, that... second hold. Mm -hmm. I mean, five second inhale, five second hold, five second exhale, five second hold. Yeah. Um, funny enough, I'm gonna bring this like to a more mundane level. You took it to like a spiritual, which I love. Mm -hmm. Um, for all for all my gym bros, I came across this concept fairly recently when we work out we're in like this sympathetic state, the fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And obviously part of working now is like sending a strong enough signal to your body to like break down muscle. And then the recovery, your nutrition, your sleep, all of that is what like builds you back up to a higher level. So for recovery, and we can say this applies to like building muscle. Cause I mean, recovery, if that's the adaptation we want um, after like a workout, when you're in a sympathetic state, Taking, I, I think the research said like three to 10 minutes of box breathing, whether you want to start like with four seconds or five seconds, mm -hmm. gets you into, into that parasympathetic state. So that rest and digest. So you're accelerating that recovery process so your body can like start regenerating muscle tissue and all that. Mm -hmm. So for, for the gym bros, if you want to maximize your gains after your workout, um, they, they did this either with box, uh, sorry, like box breathing for like three to 10 minutes or listening to like slow, calm music or a combination of both. But when we start analyzing mm. things, like if you work out in a big box gym, there's tons of light, there's tons of loud music. Like it's really hard to get into that state. You would have to exit the building and go to the where it's tranquil. And if it's a high traffic area, then you're kind of screwed anywhere you yeah. go. I think uh, if, if I were to create a gym, one of my ideas is to create a gym that has a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So in the sanctuary, you actually just chill, and it's like a a low low light frequency level. Um, there's there might be light changes, kind of like the way you see the green, the reds, or whatever. Like maybe like an infrared. Like yeah, I know I've seen Dave Asprey has the red lights and stuff. He sells it out. Maybe something like that. But then you're able to tune into like a uh some frequency music, which is like very chill, and then at the same time you can even wind down. And now that I know that after you work out those seven to 10 minutes or 30 minutes of extra breath work after your workout is going to increase your muscle size and increase your recovery because the more oxygen your, your, your body has, the better it is. It's going to do all of its functions, right? Is that the concept? 
Yeah, with three to 10 minutes, what we're doing is like uh, facilitating the recovery process where that's where the gains happen in the recovery. Like during the workout, you're just breaking down your muscle tissue, you're sending a, a signal, uh, but the recovery is where we actually get stronger and bigger. Game changer, guys. Y'all take some take some notes. These are <laughs> really good notes. Three to 10 minutes, man. That's not even, that's not even a lot, you know? No, nah, and if you're like laying down, eyes closed, it's it's... It's peaceful. It gets you ready. It also like transitions you for the rest of the day because you also don't want to be like all aggressive or all like you yeah. know hyped up. Um, like everything in life, there's there's a time and a place for everything. So just by doing that simple breathing technique, um, obviously inhaling through the nose, you can exhale through the nose or through the mouth. But that it's crucial to breathe through the nose and trying to like fill up that belly. Amazing, bro. Amazing. I've also, uh, I used to listen to this podcast a while back called the Savannah podcast, and they would talk a lot about breath work. And there was this breathing specialist, and this is before I knew what the hell, like, what the hell is a breathing specialist? <laughs> this guy came on, oh, I'm a breathing specialist. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to tune into this one and see what it's all about. It sounds kind of wacky. But then, dude, he was talking about some some cool breath breathing techniques. So he would do, like, the, the three... Inhales with one nostril and then exhale with one nostril, either slowly or three times, exactly the same. So you would breathe in with one nostril, sorry, breathe in with one nostril and then exhale three times with the same, the opposite nostril, right? The, the nostril, three times, exactly the same pace. And then vice versa, he would switch the nostril and inhale with the other one and exhale through the other one, like the same way, right? And then he would do three and then one slow. I was like, bro, let me try that out. But he's like, if you want to do something that's like, you wanna you wanna put your brain at a higher capacity to ingest more information, or to perform at a higher level for whatever you do, dude. I did it before a soccer game, and this is like a maybe like five years ago. I'm a veterano, right? I'm, I'm working yeah. in, the, in the Sunday leagues. Like I con the and I'm posito viejo también. So we're playing, in bro. <laughs> in Chacon, or where do you play? No, no, I was playing at uh Jacobin. Okay, okay, okay. The small, the smaller field, right? Uh huh. You know, I was playing both the Chacon and the Jackman, but this was on a Sunday. Okay. Bro, I don't I just tried it just to see what happened. Maybe it could have been me on my, you know, like, but no, I played way better by just doing that, dude. I was like, what the hell? Did I tap into another part of my brain that I don't use or what? Because I was like on a higher level of playing. I never played that well. I was like, man, it could have been coincidence, but I did the breath work that this guy talked about and and I would do it every so often during the game, dude. And I was like, God, I'm out of way. What the hell? Like, I even scored, dude. I don't know. I'm not even a scorer, bro. <laughs> I'm more like a defense midfield guy, you know? So I was like, oh, shit, dude. Like, what? Like, did I tap into something or what? <laughs> you never heard of that kind of breathing? I don't know uh, what it's called. Not like that, bro, but I'm going to have to check it out. Like, especially yeah. whenever I play or whenever I do something important, mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to have to check that out. Yeah, he he tell he just says to do it like about five times before you do anything, and then every so often do it again. Um, so you do like the three breath in and then the exhale, you know, three times, and you will know, do that like five different times, and then it's just I don't know, man. I, it it might have been just me on a, you know, what do they call that the the placebo, the placebo? effect, the placebo yeah. effect. But I don't know. I I've done it a couple of times after that when I was playing soccer a few years ago. I stopped playing like what right after COVID because of my knee. Okay. So, yeah. la rodilla. Sí, No, but I'm definitely gonna have to give that um check that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. And so you have the the infrared lights at home or no? Um. So like for example, right now I'm using. I can see him reflecting. That's why. I... <laughs> yeah. So I'm using this little light. I hope it doesn't mess up too much on the on the visual or give you a hard time. I'm sorry about that, bro. Um, but yeah, I have incandescent light bulbs, which contain like that infrared light, mm -hmm. which is synonymous with that infrared heat. Um, they're no longer used because of that same thing. Like they take more energy to power. And since they emit heat, like your AC has to work it's more harder. Yeah. So even glass windows are designed to like keep that infrared light out. Out. Mm. So essentially, but the people don't understand like what infrared does to our body. So we made our homes and offices energy efficient, but we make our bodies energy, energy efficient. Energy efficient, al revés. Exactly, exactly. Um, and I mean, going back to the mitochondria, bro, like yeah. infrared light is huge. I was, reading, I was reading, I was reading their theories. So mm -hmm. I mean, like everything we have to like keep an open mind, 
But apparently, like all these disease, chronic disease, whether it's cancer, diabetes, um, when they like analyze the cells of the area that's affected, they see that the mitochondria is dead, basically. So there's this theory that like the mitochondria can be at like 20% of its function and still like be able to carry through its functions. But once it gets lower than that, it's basically game over. So just something interesting. And when we look at mitochondrial health, that's when we really get into uh, sunlight, grounding, all these frequencies, like um, what Wi-Fi does to us, what Bluetooth does to us. That's why uh, when people are like working out, so they, I get it, people want to be fit and stuff like that. But first of all, they're working out under extremely damaging artificial Mighty. light. And then they have their wireless AirPods just radiating uh, frequencies into their brain. Mm -hmm. And then they're surrounded by all these Wi-Fis and all these all this cell phone uh, signal. That are going through our bodies. Exactly. So it's like that is affecting the mitochondria to a degree that most people don't understand. And when we understand that mitochondria is like the foundation of health, we start painting health or seeing health in a different perspective. Bro. Uh, when I started learning about the mitochondria, it was it was the, also indirectly with uh, I don't know if you heard of Doctor James Rady. He wrote the book Spark. Oh, uh, he talks about the mitochondria a lot. So when he was mentioning the mitochondria on that book, and it's, this book is on on health overload, right? Like making sure that you change your your ways to to become the most imp improved version of yourself and body wise, right? And mind, because it's, it's it's called Spark because there's a the mind, right? It's a spark. And then the mitochondria is one of the main, main uh, organelles in that cell that if it's working at hundred percent capacity, then it can recover. It can do all kinds of functions that your body needs on a cellular level. So when you're able to tap into that, like knowledge and be able to understand like shit, like even that, bro, I, I never thought about it. Oh, gym, pues con toda la luz, que es, you know, fabricated light and um, the, all those signals that are going through our bodies on a daily basis because all these towers all around us. And then not only that, but we have our cell phones next, next to us and we're damaging our cellular level uh, at a higher rate than before. Would you say that theoretically, maybe in the last 30 years, our health has declined at, on overall uh, as a, to, like a total society has kind of declined on, on, on health wise? A hundred percent. Even, uh, even without any mathematics, just by doing just my, but you kind of start, like, but there's all the towers here, all the cell phones. I mean, automatically you're getting bombarded with Wi Fi. No, 100%. And I think without even looking at numbers, mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. we, it's pretty apparent that we have a health crisis. Like I said, we can talk about suicide, we can talk about depression, anxiety, uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer, dementia. We can talk about children, uh, obesity in children. Mm -hmm. obesity in adulthood um and a lot of it has to do with our environment how does and i hope people understand this how in the, there's more information than ever before there's more diets than ever before there's more diet books there's google there's chat gpt there's this ai technology there's more gyms there's more personal trainers yet we're getting more and more sick so clearly something is off when we start understanding our physiology and like, for example, we start looking at the mitochondria in our cells and what influences them, then we can see the problem. Bro, the vision pro, like all those things blasting like um, LED lights straight into our eyeballs and to our skulls. I want to say this because I hope it gives people like a, a visual representation. Our body is made up of 70% water, but at a molecular level, it's 99% water. So out of 100 molecules, 99 of them, or can contain water. Almost everything in life contains water and it contains like water molecules. So let's say you get a piece of beef, a steak, and you put it in the microwave. The microwave is gonna emit radio frequencies. It's gonna emit like frequencies. Those frequencies are gonna penetrate to the water molecules and they're basically cooking the water molecule to heat up the food from the inside out. So that's how the temperature changes because those water molecules are basically being fried or being cooked. So if we're made up of 99% water molecules and what you do, what the Wi-Fi does is emit very powerful 
frequencies. What your AirPods and your wireless headphones do are emit uh, radio frequencies. So those radio frequencies are basically cooking and frying your molecules from the inside out. I, I, I hope that makes sense. So when you're wearing your AirPods, when you're surrounded, you're putting your phone to your head, you're like affecting yourself at a molecular level. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh yeah, it makes total sense to me. And I guess it's like you're in a in the damn microwave. Exactly, exactly. When we're the meat. Exactly. We're, we're the meat. And we're yeah. burning those little water molecules and and we're into, we're doing it to ourselves. That's the fucked up part about it, man. That's it. That's scary, man, because they're they're putting up more towers as we speak, you know, like everywhere we go. Like there's towers here, there's towers there, there's ones that you can't even see that are like trees and there's some that are like hidden, you know, so like we're getting we're getting all the radio frequencies at a, on a consistent you know basis throughout the day and affecting our bodies man that's that's insane it's hard to combat but there's ways at least to alleviate your your personal areas and and uh not ingest the other foods that are going to be causing more bio biochemical you know, breakdowns in your body you know like ching that us i mean so there's ways to go get out of it but it this takes some work some discipline some awareness and some, you know, you need to go and do a little bit of research and start reading, like, what's going on with this? Or why is this is that, you know, and 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 then that, that's why we have people like Jorge that, you know, he, that's what he does. Like, he educates you guys. And he can put you in a on a different mindset for seeing health in a different way, you know, and uh, there's little things you can do to make a big impact in your life, man. The, the best remedy is grounding. And it sounds so hippie, uh, but just... Tapping in to like the earth's natural frequencies and absorbing those frequencies, especially like the electrons, all the electrons that the that the earth naturally gives off helps us keep our body in balance in homeostasis and combat all these artificial uh, frequencies that, that are around us. Bro, you're saying so many key words here. Homeostasis. Oof. What you know about homeostasis, brother? <laughs> Not yeah, you. I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about the the listeners. That <laughs> no, hundred percent. And and yeah. that's what uh, going back to light, uh, talking that talking about the the super charismatic mm -hmm. nucleus being in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, one of its main functions, is keeping homeostasis within the body, like keeping balance in the body. And one of the way that it does that is through hormonal uh, behaviors or function. So, for example, we have a photoreceptors like a protein in our eye called mm -hmm. melanopsin which perceives light and then sends signal to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the hypothalamus and that's how the whole hormonal process happens so we can maintain homeostasis within the body once homeostasis is, is off that's when we start running to this ease this balance this ease this which means like you're not in ease you're out of ease Bro. Exactly. Exactly. Jorge, I don't know if you want to do part three, man, but we're running out of time right now. <laughs> I, I'm down with part two, if part three if you are, bro. I'm down with part three, man. We're, Let's we're do part three. Right now, uh, but let me wrap up this last minute before we go into part three. Guys, this is an important episode because you're getting like the little tidbits of the inner workings of your body. Things that you can do on a natural level, just going outside, you know, and now you're understanding like the infrared. And maybe you can do some research like, hey, go check out infrared, the red light, uh, waking up hours, you know, what happens in those first 30 minutes of the sun breaking through. And it's just a game changer, man. It's just like going into the gym. If you're a gym goer, what can I do? Hey, instead of going to the gym with some headphones on, you know what? Uh, don't use headphones or use like the ones that Jorge's using or the ones that I'm using, the ones that are wired. Onto your phone is is it's a better option and not the best option either, but it's at least a, a different option, you know, because it's still connected to your phone. And then on top of that, um, after you work out, go out, go outside, get sent three to ten minutes of of breath work, box work, you know, do the breathe in, hold it, exhale. I have actually um, on my TikTok, I have a little clip on that. If you if you check out my TikTok, I have a box uh, breath work. It's uh, I just posted like two days ago. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, go, go check it out guys. But yeah, man, it's a lot of things you can do. And what he's giving us a lot of information regarding that. So we're going to go into part three, just break it down a little bit further. So you guys can, can stay captivated with this talk because it's an amazing talk. So Jorge, see you in part three.
<laughs> Sounds good, bro. Looking forward to it. <laughs>